Uh, the local itself, I had to wait for it to pull out because the, there was extra coaches on it. Uh -huh. So I ha was waiting and it was just had taken the brakes off and I looked up the track and I seen this big headlight coming around the bend. Uh -huh. So I run back and I stood at the theater steps and watched it crash. She went to two and a half coaches. Well, the third coach was all, the seats were all pushed up to the top of it. Yeah. Well, here we are in Almond for the Canadian Cultural Video Library. It's darn cold, but I bet there was a lot of pain in those days. Don't you think so, Fred? In 1942, this yes. was about the spot that the uh, the uh, troop train came and smashed into the back of that, uh, what they call it? It was the Pembroke Local. Oh, the Pembroke uh, Local, yeah. And uh, it was running late at the time. It was on a Sunday evening on Christmas weekend yeah. of 1942. And um, the accident uh, occurred in a snowstorm. It was about 8.40 at night. And it just occur occurred along here. The old uh, Almont station uh, yeah. used to be located here, and it was just in front of the station uh, where the uh, crash occurred. There was an awful lot of uh, people killed, and yet the troop train escaped without any injuries at all, didn't it? There were no casualties on the troop train at all. Yeah. Um, but on the Pembroke local, uh, there were 36 lost their lives, and uh, over 200 were badly injured in the in the accident and from the reading of the uh, the newspapers of that day there was some miraculous escapes wasn't it there? there was people who thought they were dead and weren't there was one carried into the makeshift mortuary and they covered up and they thought she was dead that's right and as I read uh, from the the paper uh, when they examined her in the hospital she had ten fractures in one leg and nine in another that's these correct. are incredible now what uh, do you think that the people around here now uh, still remember that night as vividly as, as uh, the the people who actually took part in I'm it. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Uh, well, it was a dirty, miserable night. It was kind of half raining earlier in the evening and then it turned kind of a mist, freezing, misty night with kind of spotted snow and it was, a, it was dirty. It was a miserable night. Yes, I was standing. The local was still across the crossing. I couldn't go by. No. I was waiting on it to pull out. And then uh, all of a sudden I looked up the track and I seen this big headlight coming around. So yeah. I got out of there. And that is the station. Because of the extra carriages, it's stretched out here. Now around this curve came the troop train. So you can imagine the devastation. It was mist. It wasn't very bright. And it came round here. It would have struck anyway, but because of the extra carriages, you had this impact coming around this curve here. And that's where it hit, about there. We were on the, at the station platform. Uh, just seeing him off, and uh, in fact, he just got on the train. When where was he going? It's uh, Stittsville. Right to Stittsville. Back to Stittsville. And uh, he just got on the train when uh, my father he saw the, the light coming across the uh, the bridge, shining through the fog, and uh, he said, "Run for it!" Just uh, so I just run across the road towards the Woods' uh, photography shop, and uh, you knew there was going to be an accident. He he. He knew there was going to be an accident, I guess, because he said run, and he jumped on the train to get jury off, and uh, so I just ran across the road, and, uh, and I got three parts, oh, halfway, three quarters way across the road when they hit. And, and I run across to the theater, which is the Royal Bank right now, mm -hmm. and I stood there and I watched it. You actually saw the I train? I seen it just bumping it. Oh, that's awful. And, and what? And was flying. Yeah. And, uh... You, you saw the, the carriages crash? Yeah, and the third coach just buckled up. The seats were pushed right up to the top of the train. You knew there was an accident and you could hear the screeching and the, uh, uh, the metal kind of rolling up type of thing, you know, the, the sounds, and, but you couldn't. Uh, it was enough that I knew it happened. I, tr I stopped then and turned around and looked. You know, it, didn't. it was a sound you never heard before. Uh, that's, that's right. It's just, I don't know how to describe it, but uh, my cousin got on the fourth car, and the, of course the the uh, troop train went through the first, uh, well, the middle of the third car, 
So, uh, my father just got on the train and he said just turn the corner on the train when it hit and the jury fell back in his arms. And it, uh, Was he injured at all? No, not at all. No, no, not at all. But, uh, First thing I thought of my sisters because I knew they were on that train. Oh, and your sisters were on the train? They were definitely on there. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, because I thought you were waiting for the train to go. So you could I go. was waiting on the train to go, but my sisters were already on there. They were going to Carl Place with my other sister because she was going to Ottawa. The other two were coming back on the 10 o'clock train back to Almont. They just went as far as Carlton with my other sister. And they, they uh, survived it? Oh, yes. So Shook up, but the, there was nothing happened to them, thank God. I didn't run around it because you couldn't get around the other side. Yeah. I just went up the station side. Mm. Mm. Yes. But they come out, out there, then they got a very shock when they seen the big engine. Yeah. Pretty near in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. 